गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी शुभम चंद्रमौली एंड ऑल दी अदर्स हु आर हियर पार्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस सेशन राइट अवे एंड लाइक सम ऑफ यू माई इट नो येस्टडे Uh, we had uh, started uh, with this session but due to a few technical glitches we were unable to complete it so we decided to do the session again today uh, thank you all for uh, joining in thank you for your patience yesterday and for joining in today and there might be a few people who weren't here yesterday who have also joined in so great to have you all here so i Uh, suppose that you can hear my voice that there is no problem with the audio can you just let me know on the chat that i am uh, uh, clear and audible great thank you for letting me know so like i said a little while earlier we are starting with the resume uh, building session so there might uh, be a few of you who were here yesterday and uh, there might be a few things that you had listened to yesterday so we are doing this again because we want to reinforce the points that were discussed yesterday uh so that you have this video to go back to later on and uh view it again and of course for the people who were, couldn't make it uh to the session yesterday and are here today all right so we start uh, with the resume building session and i would also like to tell you that uh in the later part of the session we are going to discuss a few resumes that you had sent in some of our earlier sessions we had asked you to share your resumes and some of you have sent we have had a look at them and we would like to talk about that that will happen a little later so ensure that you stay with us throughout the session before we start a little about us so ethnis has been helping students to realize their dreams for the last uh, 14 years and the sessions that we are holding are also part of the same thing we are conducting these sessions for students to help them achieve whatever they want to in their careers to uh, kick to help them kick start their careers so it's uh, great for me to be here today uh, to uh, have this session to conduct this session and great to have you all here as part of the session now any important updates whether it's related to our sessions or whether it's related to any drives that are happening tests that are happening all this information we uh, publish on our telegram channel ethnis code mitra so please be a part of that channel join the channel if you haven't already the uh, link is uh, being shared on the chat so please click on that link and join if you are not a part of the channel already okay so now the actual topic now resume building why are we talking about resume building right now so you have uh, most of you many of you have answered your uh, tcs nqt exam and once you are selected if you are selected for the interview the first thing that you will have to do is create your resume and send it across and it's just not just about tcs even if it's any other company right if uh, there is an interview there has to be a resume that you need to prepare that's one part of it and in other cases you have companies where they uh, they advertise for their jobs the the jobs that they have for you where you send your resume right away right in case of tcs you're writing the uh, exam but there may be some other places where you are sending the resume uh, to the company 
So it could be both ways where you have been shortlisted and they have asked you to send your resume or the resume is the first thing that you send to them. And in both cases, the resume is very important in both of these cases. So that is why one session has been dedicated only for this. Now we hear both these terms, resume, CV or curriculum vitae, these are terms that we use and you might be using these terms interchangeably. You might be saying that uh, my resume is, uh, I'm, I'm working on my resume or my CV is ready. So uh, in practice we use it uh, interchangeably but uh, do you know what is the actual term that we need to use or you need to use as freshers? Can you let me know in the chat? What is the term do you think you need to use? Okay, I see a few answers. Some of you are saying CV, some of you are saying resume. All right, so I think I can take it as a 50 50. 50% 50 is saying CV, and the other 50% is saying resume. All right, so uh, yes, so the correct term to use is resume especially for freshers okay like i said we use the term interchangeably but the right word would be resume now resume is from the uh, french word resume which means summary okay and a freshers resume is nothing but a summary you don't have any details to write all right if you are an experienced professional if say you have been a project manager for many years a senior project manager or you are an academician okay a professor doing a lot of research and uh, things like that there is a curriculum vitae or cv to be prepared because it contains a lot of details curriculum vitae by the way is from a latin word and uh, you know it means uh, the course of life okay and it's much more detailed so the right term to be used is resume like many of you are uh, saying right now resume is the right word but when you say CV also we understand that you are actually referring to the resume. All right. So let's go straight to the sections in a resume. Okay. And here we are talking about the sections in a resume for a fresher because if you are an ex uh, experienced professional it would be different. Here we are talking about a fresher's resume and that is what we will discuss. The first thing that you need to keep in mind is the contact information. If you can see this resume here, you can see the contact information here, okay, including your name by the way. When I say contact information, I am not saying you start with the address. Of course, your name will be there, followed by your uh, address, followed by uh, your email and your phone number, okay. So this is the place it goes. So, which means at the top. So, it can be either at the center, some write it at the left, some write it at the right, but it's somewhere here that it needs to come, all right. And there's something that I would like to mention here. So, in this particular sample, because it is a session for resumes, uh, we have used this picture, but do not write this. Don't write resume at the top of your resume. It's understood that it is your resume. Okay. So don't write that heading. This is what will come. Your name, your address, your email, your uh, a phone number is what will appear here. And after that comes your career objective. Now, uh, often uh, people ask, is career objective uh, compulsory? Should we always write a career objective? What will happen if you don't write and things like that? Okay. So, now when we are talking about resumes, we are talking about resumes that are how are the way they are generally done. Okay. You can decide what sections you want to keep, what sections you do not want to keep, but we would recommend that you have a career objective. Okay. Why do you need a career objective? Because 
suppose you were a professional who has worked for say five years uh, seven years ten years you have your experience to talk about so you would write something called a professional summary okay instead of a career objective you would have something called a professional summary where you would describe in brief what your experience has been like but you don't have that experience because you are a fresher so what can you write instead you can write your career objective so that is the idea behind writing this so here i'm showing you a sample career objective so this person is uh, uh, written has written that her career objective is seeking to leverage my skills in c++ to gain expertise in multiple areas of software development and thereby contribute to the success of the organization okay so you can you are uh, you would notice in this career objective that the uh, candidate is talking about her skills what she wants and also about the organization the company that uh, where she's applying for a job it's not only about herself she's talking about her skills because she wants to use those skills for the development or uh, for the success of the organization so this could be a kind of career objective that you you can write How, having said that it's not that you have to write in this way this is just an example just keep in mind that it is not only about you when you are writing your career objective you have the talking about the organization or your contribution to the organization is also very important and also one more thing i would like to add so uh, don't just blindly take any career objective that you see on the internet and put it in your resume personalize it let it be about your objective don't copy somebody's or pick something from the internet you know what is it that you want to write what are your skills what you want to do and write your career objective accordingly okay so this is something that you need to keep in mind so i see that uh, uh, shivraj asks whether resume means skills uh, okay you are telling me about the meaning of resume and uh, cv all right uh, kartik uh, so we are showing examples as and when uh, we are moving to each section okay so this was an example for a career objective now comes the next section that is your education now when you talk when you write about your education of course you have got to write about your education but there's something that you need to keep in mind and that is that you need to write in the reverse chronological order and when i say reverse chronological order i mean what you have studied last you need to write first so if your engineering degree is your last last thing that you have done that will come first and then your 12th and then your 10th okay if you have done your masters after your be that will come first your mtech then be then 12th then 10th okay that is something that you need to keep in mind there are a few other things also related to education which we will cover as we proceed with the session now what i would like you to do is here is a resume this is not a resume that one of you sent this is a resume uh, that was uh, that that we had so i would like you to have a look at this and let me know on the chat what is it that can be better here okay what can be better here uh, ignore this part this is a dummy address that we have written apart from that what are the things that you think needs to change let me know on the chat okay i see a lot of uh, lot of responses 
So one, uh, uh, so I get a response which says the order mistake and I think when you say an order mistake you are saying it is not in the reverse chronological order, right. Education should be in reverse order, there is nothing about marks, there is nothing about the passing year, right. So heading should not be mentioned as resume, yes that shows that uh, you know you all were uh, attentive to the session until now, that is right. The objective needs to be different. Right, you are all right and yes Karthik, the email too, you have noticed that, the email too. So thank you all for your responses. So let us quickly look at uh, uh, what can change in this resume. So this, uh, this is actually just a part of the resume. So this should go, right and uh, like somebody said, this crazyrahul95 at gmail.com is an okay email address to have, there is no problem with it. What is the problem is, that is not an email that you should be sharing with a potential employer, okay. Your email should sound professional and this does not give that professional feel, it looks more like a fun feeling, right. So when you are sending a resume, you would like want to sound professional, so your email, create a new email if you have, if you do not have one, uh, create a new email which sounds professional and then uh, share that email with, uh, put that email address on your resume, okay. So that is one thing and yes, this objective is too, uh, it sounds too generic, it is not uh, something specific to this person, so that would, that should change and of course what we just discussed, that reverse chronological order, the marks, the year, when did you pass, we do not know, right. If you simply uh, give, give this, it sounds like you do not want to share your marks because your marks are very low. You do not want to share the year because you probably uh, finished a long, long time ago. I do not know, right. So give me that information, mention that in your, uh, in your resume. And one thing that you all missed, yes, uh, Karthik and, uh, yeah, Karthik I think and uh, there is somebody else also who has mentioned, look at this, a spelling error. It is not, I do not think Rahul does not know the spelling of education, it is just that this resume has not been proofread. So one important thing that you need to do is proofread or ask somebody else to read. If you have spent so much time uh, writing that probably you know you are not, uh, you cannot even, you are not even noticing the mistake, right. So ask somebody else to read, ensure that it is uh, proofread. So even here you see this, a spelling error, right. So be careful about that too. So these are a few things that you need to keep in mind. So let us continue with the sections, we have finished with three parts, next come your certifications. So uh, if you have done additional certifications, okay, outside your course that is, apart from your B, you would have done uh, either other uh, courses maybe in your college or outside, any certifications that would add value to your resume you should ensure that they are mentioned in your resume and internships should definitely be mentioned. Why? First of all, because you do not have any other experience to talk about, right? Your internship is like your experience and mentioning that is important, all right? Now uh, somebody may ask, is it compulsory? Again, if you have internships, you should write about them. You, if you do not have them, of course, you cannot write, right. But if, if you have done those internships, please do mention, they do add value to your resume, especially because you do not have professional experience to talk about. Next come your projects, write about the projects that you have done and we will talk about that also a little later, how you need to write about them, but do definitely mention your projects. One more thing I would like to say when I talk about projects, there might be, a, you know, you might have done a lot of projects. There are some people who have done projects and projects, so many of them. So it would not make sense to write all of them, right. So select the most important ones, select the ones where you feel are really worth mentioning. Select a few good ones and put those in your resume and do not write pages of projects. Remember this is a resume, right. So keep that in mind. And then mention your key skills, okay. Here you can mention your technical skills and your non-technical skills which would basically be your soft skills. 
Okay, now there are uh, there are some people when they create their resume, when they are talking about skills, they just go on listing things. Everything under the sun is there as a skill. Now that wouldn't be advisable. Okay, because now when they are uh, say you you have written all of this and your next they are going to be called for the interview, they will question you on those skills. And what will you answer then? If that is not your skill, how will you answer? So, be honest in your uh, resume. Mention only those skills which are actually your skills. And remember, you could be asked questions on those. Okay? Whether even if when it comes to soft skills, don't write because there are so many soft skills. Don't write all that are there. Write those that are applicable to you. That suppose they ask you questions you are able to talk about. Say if you are writing leadership as a skill and they question you on that, you should be able to talk about why you call yourself a good leader. There should be something to explain, right? So keep that in mind when you write your key skills. Okay? So these are uh, some of these sections. And the last one is achievements. So uh, when you are writing about your achievements, ensure that you write something worth mentioning. Of course, uh, we all have achievements. It's just that uh, not all those achievements may be something that needs to be mentioned on the resume. So it should be something that stands out, right, if you are writing in your resume. So keep that in mind when you uh, write your achievement and uh, write a little bit of detail. Okay, I'm not saying write a paragraph on it, but at least a few words on that, uh, a little bit of explanation is required. And uh, uh, preferably write recent ones, something that happened in school as an achievement might not be the best thing to write in a resume. Recent achievements uh, are good and noteworthy achievements. So something you won in a class contest might not be uh, worth mentioning, but something you won at the college level or an intercollegiate level at a state level, that could be considered as an achievement. Okay. Now, before we proceed, Again, a, a screenshot of a part of a resume, again not sent by you, a resume that we had. What do you see uh, that can be different here, that can be done differently by the uh, st student or the candidate? All right, so I see a question. If you are currently pursuing your degree, then in that case, what to write? So you will still have to write, uh, Prajwal, you will still have to write, suppose it's your BE degree, you will have to write BE and you will have to mention within brackets that you are pursuing, okay? Or you can mention when you will, there will be a place where you will write, right? When you will complete it, that also should be mentioned. So any certification that you have, please do mention. I see a few, uh, few uh, questions in the chat. If there are any, uh, you know, certifications that you have, do mention it, okay? And uh, regarding the mechanical internship, so write your, uh, if you have an internship in, a, uh, in, a, in an IT company, mention it. If that is not there, then do mention this uh, internship, Vishnu. All right. So, let us go back to uh, the, uh, the, the snapshot or the screenshot of the resume that I was showing. I am waiting for a few more answers. Anything that you see needs to be different? All right, so Shivraj is suggesting that un you are undergoing the uh, BE course is what you can write. Right. All right, so I haven't got any responses for what could be changed uh, in this uh, screenshot. Okay, so uh, Karthik says OS is, mistake, is a mistake. Okay. Yes, sir, Prajwal, do write your uh, grades up to the latest semester because you don't haven't finished, right? You will have to write until the uh, last semester that you have written. Okay, OS is not required, OS is not highlighted. Okay, all right. So, great, great to see your responses. So, the main thing here is actually, you know, it's, uh, these are simple things maybe, but still make a difference. 
Okay. So, have some kind of uniformity. So, if you are bolding headings, see you if project is in bold, then technical skills is also given a similar kind, you have written it in a similar kind of box, needs to be bolded in a similar manner. Right? If you are uh, bolding programming languages, uh, bold this too. So, one is bolded, one is not bolded, one is bolded. So, let us not do it that way, let us maintain uniformity. Okay? That is one part and the other part is this, like some of you mentioned, project, voice based email for the blind. Now, if I was your, if I were your interviewer, I have no clue what this project is about. This, this is more like a title of the project. So, what was this project? What, how did it help? What did you do in that project? Right? Some detail is required. Again, when I say detail, I'm not talking about a whole paragraph on it, but a couple of lines at least, one line maybe on what the project was about and another about what you did there. Another, when did you do this project? You might have done it, uh, say, in your first year, right? I don't know. So, mention when you did it, what it is, and uh, what was your role in it, okay? So, that, that, uh, that explanation is required because as an interviewer, I don't understand looking at this, what it is. I might ask you further questions during the interview based on it, but that uh, little bit, the basic information about the project should be there. So, that's something you need to keep in mind because a lot of uh, people do this. They just write a few words. It's more like a project heading that you are writing. All right. Okay. So, here, can you tell me what are the uh, errors you see in this uh, screenshot? Thank you, Shekhar. Glad that you are enjoying the session. So, I am waiting for your take on the errors. Okay. So, there is a spelling. Awards is not highlighted. Okay. All right. Again, a bolding problem. Okay. All right, internship spelling mistake. All right, bolding not done, no bullet points. All right, all right. Yes, what you all say is right. Okay, so see internship, like you all correct, you all uh, rightly uh, pointed out the spell uh, spelling error, right? And internship, and just writing. I would also add. I, I did not see that as a response. So I would like to add here. Don't just write the names of companies, write a little bit more than that, okay? It's not just a list of companies, you say internship and write a list of companies there, right? A little bit about uh, maybe a, what that company is and what, what was your role as an intern there would help, right? And uh, awards and achievement, like you said, is uh, not in uh, bold, uh, maintain uniformity, all right? And uh, coming to this, first prize in coding competition, now great that this person has won all those prizes. But what competition was it? Did that contest have a name? When was it? Where was it? Right? Like I said, it could be a class coding competition, in which case it is probably not worth mentioning. Correct? So, write that detail and when you have bulleted everything else, maintain that same format. Bulleting some points, not bulleting some points, it takes away uh, from your, uh, you know, something from your resume. Right? So, do that and give a bit of detail about what the name of the contest, when, where, all right. Okay, so um, that is the problem there. Yeah, right, uh, by subject of internship, what that person did there is required. Right, the awards need more information, you are all right, great, the alignment is not proper, that's right. Okay, so keep these things in mind. So, when we see another resume, it's easy for us to uh, find out, okay, this is not right. But maybe if it's our resume, it kind of, uh, you know, the, the, we don't notice that, okay, this is the problem. So, keep that in mind. And of course, after you are done with it, you save the document, you proofread it, okay, proofreading is very important. And then you print it, well, the printing happens if you are going for uh, a face-to-face -face interview where you're actually been called for the interview there, right? 
So, otherwise you are just going to share the uh, soft copy, all right. Now, we will go to something called customizing a resume. I am sure you all know the meaning of customize. What is the meaning of customize? Can uh, you let me know in the chat? What is customizing? What do you think is uh, customizing? Please let me know in the chat. Okay, so uh, I get responses like uh, customizing is making it unique, relevant, okay, fixing, modifying. Uh, all right, thank you for your answers. So, customizing uh, basically means where you are making some changes just for that particular, you know, for one particular thing. Now, in the context of resumes, let me explain. Okay, something like modifying, exactly. So, Santosh mentions changes based on the needs of the company. That is what I would say is, uh, you know, the closest change being making those changes based on the needs of the company. So, say you are applying, all right, say you are complying, uh, applying to company A, company B and company C, okay. So, you are the same person applying uh, for all these uh, uh, jobs, the jobs in these three companies, uh, all right. Now, when you are customizing, you have your resume. Now, when you are customizing a resume, you are looking at what A needs and tweaking your resume, making a few changes in your resume to suit the requirement of A. When you are applying to B, again you are looking at B's requirement, what are they saying in their job description and making a few changes there, likewise for C and so on. So, each time you are, you are not saying, oh, my resume is done, let me send wherever uh, I see a job, uh, you know, or a job opening, I am going to send that resume. That would not be the best thing to do. It would be good to customize, which means you study the job description and see how you can customize your skills accordingly, highlight your matching skills. And let me be very clear, when I say customize your skills, I am not telling you to write skills that aren't there, skills that you don't have. That is not what we are saying. When we are saying customize your skills, look at the job description. Maybe that same skill you have written in a different way in your resume. So, it is better to match the words that the job description uses. That is what I mean. Okay? Or there might have been something, a skill that you did not include, but you realize that you have it and that A wants it then you need to add it, right. So, that is what customizing is about and it is better that you customize your resume according to the requirements of the company when you know. If it is just they have not said anything and they have just asked for resumes, of course, you cannot do much, but when you have a job description, do customize your resume. So, I hope the concept of customizing is clear. Now, let us come to resume templates. Now, we all have something called the internet and we know that there are probably hundreds or thousands of resume templates available on the internet, right. So, now the question is, should we use a resume template which is there on the internet, okay, or should we create our own resume from scratch? What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Do you think we need to use a resume template okay? or should we uh, create our own resume from scratch? Your thoughts or what have you been doing? Okay, so Santosh asks how many pages should a resume be? So ideally when it is a resume, they say a one pager is best. Okay. However, you may need to explain a little, right? So, sometimes it might go on to the second page, but 
try to keep it uh, even where there are where there's explanation required try to keep it really uh, brief okay one page is the best because then you can quickly glance at the resume but if there is explanation required you might need require a little more but don't write don't make it a long resume because like i said resume means summary okay so i see uh, responses like uh, create own resume create uh, uh, both are acceptable you can take template okay no i wasn't asking what what is the right thing to do what you would do was by question and i think some of you are uh, creating your own resume some of you are taking a template all right so let us see what would be the best thing to do okay so before you decide you need to know what is good about a resume template okay now when you have a template so you know what a template is right it, it is you just have to fill in your details you can just download that template on from the internet and fill in your details there so where there is name you fill in your name where uh, there is there are other details maybe there's career objective you type in your career objective so you don't need to create any you just have to fill in where it's required right so organizing your resume becomes very easy when you use a resume template if you are starting from scratch, you have to decide what goes where, which place, what should come. All right, organizing becomes easy. You can make a great first impression because uh, there, it has a professional look, right? Because it's all neatly done. It's not an attempt by you to trying to create that uh, good resume. It will probably create a better first impression because it's professionally done. And of course, it saves time. Because like I said, everything is done. All you have to do is fill in your details. You don't have to worry about the other things. So those are the uh, plus points of using a resume template. Okay. But it's not without its uh, flip side. Okay. One flip side is that it could be similar to many other resumes which uh, students or candidates have used. People, other people applying for the same job might have uh, liked the same template that you liked okay maybe it's a very popular template everybody likes it looks very neat looks very professional i will use it my friend is using it somebody else applying for the job is also using it so then all resumes look alike right all meaning your resume is similar to many other resumes which is probably not something that you would want you would want your resume to stand out so that is one thing a risk that you need to keep in mind okay and another thing is you thinking that okay i've got a ready made template let me just use this and get done with it so the template that you're using might not be of the best quality okay you might use something that uh, would not uh, create a good impression though you are using it to create a good impression it may not because the template is substandard okay so this is something that you need to keep in mind so there's nothing wrong with creating using a template there's nothing wrong with creating your own resume just keep these points in mind and decide what works best for you all right yes uh, amrit you say uh, so amrit says that uh, having a template is good as long as not everything is the same and some changes are made according to user needs yes that can be done where you are making some changes so it is not the same thing as the others are using so you have to take a call on what kind of, uh, uh, you know, whether you are going to use a template or create your own resume. All right. Now let us talk a little about power verbs. Okay. Now what are power verbs? First of all. So verb we know is an action word, right? We have studied in English grammar when we started whenever we started learning English grammar, we know that a verb is an action word. What is a power verb? Uh, action words with positive meaning, okay, are with strong positive meaning, I would say, are power verbs. And when you use these verbs, you are, you are able to communicate strongly and confidently. When it's on your resume, it shows you as a strong candidate. And when you use different power verbs, you can avoid using the same words over and over again. Okay, now to understand what power verbs are, now this is more of a definition of what is a power verb. So to understand better, let us look at a few examples. Okay, look at these uh, 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 verbs, developed, designed, monitored, created, organized. These are strong words, strong verbs. 
okay now instead of writing developed imagine if i had written was responsible for the development of okay was responsible for the uh, design of things like that you need not be just responsible anything but where you know there's no verb here it's you are starting with was responsible so is this better or is this better when you say developed it strikes the readers mind that you developed something you designed something you monitored you created right that is why they are called power verbs so use words like this where possible and avoid things like was responsible for dash 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 okay so try to use these uh, power verbs in your resume and why do should you use them because they add quality like i said uh, developed is much stronger than was responsible for the development of okay and it also helps in something called ats shortlisting ats stands for applicant tracking system so let us quickly understand what that is okay now uh, like i said uh, there may be cases where it's not that you are answering the test and then you are shortlisted and called for the interview and then you send your resume okay that is one scenario but there may be other scenarios where you are asked for the resume first and uh, when you know companies are recruiting on a very large scale do you think the hr or the recruiter has the time to sit and read each resume of course not they can't sit and read thousands of resumes right so the process is automated the first level screening at least they might automate it they use something called the applicant tracking system or applicant tracking software where they feed in a key a few keywords okay they divide a, a resume into different sections so under work experience in your case that may not be applicable but under education skills they will feed in a few keywords and then match your resu resume against those keywords and that will be the basis of the shortlisting okay so this is also one reason why uh, we mentioned that you need to customize your resume because the keywords they feed in here might be the same as the words in their job description so it makes sense to use those words in the job description in your resume too because it it is uh, that will be taken as a keyword okay and even some of these power verbs may be keywords so key uh, keywords in the ats so do use the power verbs do use the words in the job description so that those are recognized as keywords by the ats okay and the ats yeah like i said searches for specific keywords qualifications to see whether you match the job description or not so keep that in mind too okay this thing about ats and something that you need to keep in mind Uh, so i see a question can we use color text uh, so we will go to that uh, kalyani in a little bit all right we are uh, we will uh, talk about that a little later in the session all right so here's a few th uh, things that you can keep in mind because of this ats thing okay when you are writing an acronym also use the long form use both okay use both now for example if you are writing be also write bachelors in engineering okay so whatever it is wherever you are writing uh, if you are writing uh, ece or cs write the full form write both the long form and the acronym version okay and it's better to avoid using tables or columns it's better to avoid remember i told you about uh, education earlier we will talk about this a little later now one of the things uh, uh, you know we often do is we put the education in a table right it looks neat in fact actually if you put in a table right if there is a table which mentions your educational qualifications it looks very neat and one glance at one glance you are able to see uh, know which year you did what what was your uh, cgpa and all that okay however when it comes to ats there could be a problem because the ats might not recognize things written inside this table so from that uh, uh, from that point of view it's better that you don't use tables and that you mention in lines right 
uh, instead of tables mention your educational qualification your BE details here your 12th 10th and so on instead of a table okay that is something that you can do and another thing related to ATS is use a traditional resume font we will see which fonts are the traditional fonts but do not use some fancy fonts because it looks nice okay because it may be difficult to read the ATS might not be able to read it. So, all the work that you have done you may be very qualified and uh, you know suitable for that job, but the ATS is not able to read your resume imagine okay. So, avoid using uh, fancy fonts uh, again just like I said do not use tables it would also be advisable not to use headers or footers okay. The reason again being the ATS might not recognize what is within that header if there is something important there it might miss that all right use standard resume section headings ok. Standard resume are like the things that I mentioned your career objective instead of writing career objective if you do you write something what I want to achieve in life ok. Uh, you might want to write do your resume a little differently. So, you are using a different heading ok I am just giving an example. So, that might not be recognized as a career objective by ATS because you have not mentioned the words career objective. So, do not uh, try to use something different when you are writing the headings ok. And uh, finally, the file type. So, uh, sometimes companies tell you so you can send it as a doc or a, a, a PDF or whatever format they say then that is fine you can use any format. If no format is mentioned it is better you use a doc file word document uh, it is better use, use uh, send it across as a word document because again. ATS might have problems reading from a PDF ok. These are a few things that you need to keep in mind uh, regarding ATS. Uh, so, Karthik we will speak about traditional font I have uh, we will be discussing it a little uh, later ok. Right we have already reached there. So, somebody had a question about color, somebody had a question about font and we are there ok. So, now what happens if uh, you know uh, what should we keep in mind regarding the use of color. Now, if you use bright colors ok to make your resume very colorful what happens is the focus of the reader whether it is your recruiter or your interviewer goes to the colors rather than the content. You do not want to them to focus on the colors what they want to uh, what uh, what you want them to focus on is what is there in that resume right. So, keep that in mind ok. Certain things can have a different color maybe the name can be a different color, but otherwise maintain uniformity ok. Maintain uniformity do not have different for different sections different colors and all that the objective is not to have a colorful resume in fact that could be counterproductive. So, maintain uniformity in color. So, that was about uh, the color part now about the font. So, these are the fonts that you can use. Times New Roman, Garmon, Georgia, Arial, Calibri, these are the fonts we generally use, right? So, use those same fonts. There might be, you know, a font that you fancy that you really like, but no, stick to these fonts. These are the traditional fonts. And as far as font size is concerned, again, uh, maintain some kind of standard there. For the regular text part, either maintain 11 throughout or 12 throughout and for headings it can be for uh, you know 14 to 16. Again use for similar kinds of headings use similar font for uh, one heading using 16 another heading using 14 you know headings at the same level that too would not be advisable. So, keep that in mind. Now, a few resume do's and do not s ok. Some of these points we might have already discussed, some of these we might have not. So, do tailor your resume to the job is nothing but customize your resume ok. Let there be no laziness there, customize your resume, do use job keywords we have already discussed that and if you have any experience highlight it. If there is uh, no experience then your internship talk about it. Okay. So, these are the do's, uh, these are not the only do's, a few do's that we have listed here. In the don'ts, please, that is uh, that's something that you really need to take note of. Do not fake information. Faking information is not okay because you will be caught out 
you will be caught out during the interview and then there will be a problem okay so give genuine information don't rely on gimmicks gimmicks is nothing that uh, nothing but things that you say to attract attention uh, you know uh, to to catch the attention of the interviewer but not in the normal manner okay for example you say uh, say for example you might say in your resume i am the best at everything i do okay now that is you're trying to draw attention there right that would be a gimmick so don't do things like that if you can say that you strive for excellence in whatever you do that is different from saying that i am the, i am the best in whatever i do right and don't have a personal section so a lot of people have a separate section with a lot of personal details mentioned there i will show that in a little bit okay so don't it's a, it people used to have this separate personal section uh, in resumes but generally these days we don't have that so you can avoid that separate personal section okay so uh, before we go ahead what do you see here what are the things uh, you think need to be done uh, differently if everything is fine you can mention that if something needs to be done differently mention that in the chat uh, so amrit asks whether uh, using a fancy background uh, is fine i would say it is better to avoid a fancy a uh, background because like uh, like i said it is it should uh, the attention should not be on the background the attention should be on what you have written right so let the focus be there okay kumar says book reading instead of reading i think you are saying that it should be book reading okay kumar what about the others anything else that you see or uh, needs to be different okay so i have got a few responses so let us go to the uh, to the uh, uh, you know the the screenshot now your yeah, extra curricular activities so, so see when you are mentioning a cricket team is not an extra curricular activity playing cricket is an extra curricular activity or uh, playing in the college band is an extra curricular activity participating in photography workshops movie making is fine but otherwise you have to be clear because a team is definitely not an activity okay that's one thing uh, the uh, bolding problem is still there so we will not even talk about it we already know now that uh, the uh, bolding has to be uniform okay uh, now do you see this uh, second uh, in hobbies and interests do you see the second line there do you see any error there in hobbies and interests the second line amrit you are right playing cricket it should be in the second line Uh, of hobbies and interests do you see uh, any error is there an error or, or is it fine the second line i am saying listening music listening music is uh, incorrect right it should be say, it should be listening to music so a small grammatical error here okay that is also not okay and like, yes like some of you have said you have to be a little more specific okay when you say reading what is what kind of reading is it reading newspapers or reading autobiographies or what is it right so be a little more specific and when you write hobbies and interests also keep in mind that it would be a good thing to write uh, hobbies or interests that would add value to you as a candidate 
okay uh, say for example you love to party that is your hobby or that is your interest now there's nothing wrong with partying but it might not add value to you, uh, you to you as a candidate in a resume right so write things now if you are uh, talking about reading reading say if you are reading autobiographies that is your hobby then it shows that you are a person who does a lot of reading tries to read about people about successful people about what they did to succeed things like that right so keep that in mind when you write your hobbies and interests all right so and this was the personal information uh, section that i spoke to you about okay now this entire section you can do away with your full name should will al already come in your uh, at the top of the resume okay and things like father's name father's occupation mother's name mother's occupation and all that is not required okay be careful of uh, uh, you know your uh, grammar and uh, uh, the way you write look at this language is no it is language is known right this is fine this uh, you you it is a good thing to write language is known but all this is not required please don't write your passport details this person had written the passport number please don't write that unless the company has asked you for your passport details date of birth you can write uh, gender marital status is not required right so it's optional actually marital status is not required uh, these three things date of birth gender is optional language is known you can write but the other things are not required and you don't need a separate personal information section for this all right okay and many people have uh, the habit of writing a declaration at the end all information provided above is accurate to the best of my knowledge and so on okay now this used to be followed once upon a time but we don't no longer use this declaration so it's not required okay so when what do you do with your resume you send it across as an email or upload it somewhere right so a declaration doesn't make much sense so we can do away with this declaration all right so apart from uh, resumes that we write as document we will also be talking a little about video resumes but before that please remember what i said earlier don't use the word resume don't write the date resume and date and don't write things that are not required physical characteristics height weight and so on right these things all these things are not required don't do these don't include these in your resume that brings us to uh, the topic of video resumes now video resume video resumes is the trend uh, these days not all companies are asking for them but it's a good thing to keep it ready there might be companies there are some companies who might ask for uh, video resumes so this is not uh, you know an alternative to uh, uh, your resume document this is an addition to okay so it would be good for you to keep a video resume ready however a few things that you need to keep in mind related to video resumes are that video resumes uh, need to be taken at a close up and not at a you know far off distance you need to be professionally attired it's not okay to wear casual clothing and create a video resume uh, you might have many things to say but ensure that it is a minute one and a half minutes max of 2 minutes okay not beyond that smile when you are uh, uh, you know uh, getting it shot practice and of course review don't simply shoot a, a video and send it across as your video resume first you practice then you see whether it is fine and uh, then send it across if you have been asked for your video resume and a few don't sir don't speak too quickly or wear uh, heavy makeup and gesture too much gesture is nothing but your hand movement right so don't move your hands too much keep your hand movement limited don't use fillers fillers are sounds like a uh, mm, words like you know we often use that in our conversations but in this case you are uh, practicing and then doing it right so get it right let there be no use of fillers in your video resume don't talk about your personal life this is a don't remember that it's not talk about your personal life it's don't talk about your personal life and don't have background noise okay so there might be if there is background noise either move to a different place or get it short when the noise has died, died down 
So these are a few things that you need to keep in mind and it's advisable to have a video resume ready, okay, just in case uh, you are asked for it. Okay, so now I go to that part where I told you, right, uh, we received a few resumes and I would like to give a little bit of feedback about some of them, okay, where specifically where uh, I, uh, we see that, you know, similar errors are done by multiple people, okay. Now, uh, tell me, is it okay to have a picture or not okay to have a picture in the resume? What do you think? What is your take on it? Should there be a picture, uh, you know, should you add your picture in your resume or should you not? All right, so uh, I see that uh, some are saying yes and some are saying no. Well, uh, ideally they, it was said that we should not be adding images or pictures because uh, uh, pic you know there is a kind of bias created. People look at the picture and may take a decision which should not be the case. It should be what is written in your resume which should uh, you know you should decide the decision should be based on that. But these days pictures are added you now if it's a video resume obviously you are there they want to uh, you know uh, they might want to gauge your personality right so a video resume your picture is there you are there in that uh, in that uh, resume so uh, it's it's fine you can you can you can take a call on that whether you want to add a picture or not add a picture however why i have included this is the picture in this particular resume was a selfie and it was uh, in casual attire in uh, you know some kind it was it wasn't a professionally taken uh, picture so if you are putting a picture your image you are putting up on your resume ensure that it is professional a professionally taken picture okay so uh, do that so uh, that was why i uh, kept this uh, resume why i displayed this resume another thing that uh, uh, we noticed in this resume is now the table part i had told you right uh, this uh, the ats the uh, tracking system might not detect but that was not uh, the error that i was talking about look at this right this has to be in caps it's a proper noun the name of your college you can't write the name of the college like this so these little things need to be kept in mind proofread that is why we say proofread your resume okay and this okay probably you took it from uh, whoever uh, you used this uh, whoever sent this might have taken it from a template but you can't uh, have headings and uh, have blanks under that if you don't have certifications or paper presentations please remove that section and industrial visits are not it's not required to mention them unless it's something really worth writing about right but definitely don't write headings and write dash under it if nothing has to be written there just don't mention those headings okay so that's something that you need to keep in mind and this also we got in one of the resumes that we received this i've already told you so do not include uh, personal unnecessary personal details Again here, this seems to be a standard error, language is no, its language is known, okay. And many, like I said earlier, have this habit. So one resume that we got from some of you, also uh, from one of you, also had this declaration. So I, I put it here again to, uh, for you to see that this shouldn't be done, the dec declaration is not required okay so uh, these are a few things that we noticed in your resume now we have uh, given you 
what the resume do's and don'ts and some of your resumes that we received we have given you a bit of feedback but you might want to know what exactly how exactly an interviewer looks at your resume would an interviewer like your resume would your interviewer not like your resume okay and it's not just about resume you might also want to know how you would do in an interview when you go for the interview the resume is one part of it how would you do in an interview what kind of questions would be asked what would uh, what would the interviewer think of my answers and so on right so there is a platform called eguru that we have which provides on demand mock interviews where you can get interviewed by professionals working in your dream companies now we noticed that there were a lot of problems students were facing students have the problem that they are not able to practice for the interview with a kind of questions an industry expert would ask them they wouldn't be able to connect with the industry expert uh, they are not able to even if they can they cannot connect with that person at the at a convenient time and they can't go to some far far off place to conduct you know to get that uh, a mock interview all right as a result often students get rejected in the interview rounds students were getting rejected in the interview rounds in many companies so keeping this in mind we created a platform called eguru so the site the website is www.eguru.triplo you can have a look at this site a little later the site will also be mentioned on the chat okay so this is the perfect solution for uh, you getting uh, your mock interviews getting a resume feedback and the key features of this platform are you have one on one on demand video sessions okay you get reviews of how you did in your uh, mock interview you get mentored you connect with industry experts somebody uh, you know from your the domain that you want from the industry that you are interested in will uh, conduct your mock interview and give you feedback and it can be done anytime anywhere because it is done on this platform online eguru so these are the key features of this and how it works is you select your preferred industry and function you choose the time what is convenient get connected and interviews are conducted through a video call and the best thing is you get immediate feedback so this would really help you to prepare for your interviews whether in terms of resumes or the kind of questions asked the kind of answers given and so on and each interview goes on for around uh, 35 minutes and we have split up how that 35 minutes is uh, you know well, what is the split up so you have your uh, time dedicated to your resume and project questions related to that if you can see here then industry specific questions there is the mentoring done right a total of 35 minutes you get per interview and this platform has been liked by students of a lot of colleges prestigious uh, colleges such as the iits and bits a lot of them have used this platform have found it very useful in preparing for interviews and they have said so as well a lot of them have uh, told us that this platform has uh, really helped the mock interview experience has helped them perform really well in the actual interview so the site is www.eguru.triplo and this is the kind of report that you would get a detailed report that you would get okay and we have a special offer for you a, a limited period offer so first of all you can go to eguru triplo and understand more about what the platform is and then to know what the offer is about you can go to the uh, chat section there's a link there there's a link that will be displayed there and you can go to that link and see what is the offer there is a, a limited uh, time offer and there is a, a discount that is being given on the uh, entire package so you can have a look at it so it will be up on the uh, chat in a bit
Yes, so the, the link is there on the chat. You can, uh, uh, you know, save that link and uh, we'll also put it up on Telegram in a little while. So go to the eGuru website, eGuru.triplo. Also look at the link, see what the offer is and see what you're getting. The, there's a good discount being offered, a limited period. It's valid uh, only for a short period. So have a look at it. Okay, so it, uh, I'm sure it'll, uh, you know, signing up for this will really help you to get uh, to get the interview experience and get good feedback uh, about how you performed in the interview as well as on your resume. So do sign do uh, if you have not already joined our Telegram channel, do join. Like I said, the link will be uh, shared on this channel as well, and also details related to our future sessions will be up on the uh, on telegram uh, uh, we have we have some sessions lined up on interviews okay the ki uh, kind of questions asked the uh, kind of interview do's and don'ts that need to be kept in mind and so on so stay tuned okay meanwhile for that actual interview experience go do have a look at eguru and uh, uh, the link where we have shared what is being offered and uh, sign up so uh, that brings us to the end of uh, this session. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for uh, uh, your participation, the many questions that you have asked, the responses that you have given. So please do uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube or the playlist if you haven't yet. Uh, follow us on our social uh, media channels, uh, Ethnis uh, and Code Mitra on Facebook and uh, Insta respectively and our email addresses address and our phone numbers are here uh, displayed so please uh, do uh, follow us and uh, of course be there for our next session looking forward to uh, meeting you all again soon thank you So uh, I have a question whether it is for experienced people for looking for it is for anybody who is looking for a mock interview experience. Okay. The telegram link is Ethnis Code Mitra. Uh, it will be shared on the chat again. Yes. So you have the uh, link there. So please do uh, join the uh, telegram channel uh, by clicking on that link or search for Ethnis Code Mitra. So thank you all, so we will uh, meet again soon.